Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, guys, before Russia invaded Ukraine and Putin directly threatened nuclear war, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists sounded an alarm. In their annual assessment of the risk of apocalypse, they kept the clock at a highly perilous 100 seconds to midnight. As they wrote at the time, the clock remains the closest it has ever been to civilization-ending apocalypse because the world remains stuck in an extremely dangerous moment. You would have to imagine that given how close we've walked to the edge in recent weeks, with the daily risk of a confrontation between the world's two nuclear superpowers, that metaphorical clock has got to be closer to doomsday than ever before. In fact, a viral Twitter thread asked this terrifying question that I've personally been contemplating myself a lot recently. Are we sleepwalking towards nuclear war? Mark Linus, he's a science writer and environmental activist. He writes, with each new Russian atrocity in Ukraine, calls for NATO intervention increase. Are we sleepwalking towards nuclear war? The appetite for risk is increasing with the horror of civilian casualties. Putin is cornered and may escalate. What's the worst that can happen? And right on cue, just listen to the utter madness being spouted by one of the most dangerous neocons on the planet. That would be Senator Lindsey Graham. He rejects a potential peace deal, angles for a no-fly zone, casually dismisses the possibility such actions could land us in World War III, and once again calls for the Russian people to assassinate Putin. So I will be dead set against any deal that requires the Ukrainian people to recognize half of the Ukraine belongs to Russia by force of arms. And if there's any chemical weapons used by Putin, that would be a war crime, and I would be supportive of a no-fly zone as a response to that. You see war crimes being committed in front of you on television every day. In Ukraine, can't the U.S. and, and NATO allies do more? Yeah. Without turning this into we World War We could if we had a... Well, it's not going to be World War III. You know, this is all a bluff. Putin knows that no one wins a nuclear exchange. So if he ordered a preemptive strike on the United States, some general would shoot him in the head. I'm calling for the crushing of the Russian economy. Even though our war and fight is not with the Russian people, it is with Putin. And the only way this war ends is with Putin either going to jail or be taken out by his own people. How do you make that happen? You help the Ukrainians. They need mix. Terrifying rhetoric there. Now, in a lot of ways, this is all kind of new terrain for anyone my generation or younger. We've grown up accustomed to planetary doomsday scenarios, but more of the climate variety, not so much nuclear holocaust. The Cuban Missile Crisis, that was something we learned about in history classes long after the visceral terror of that moment had passed. As we came of age, the Cold War arms race had ended as the Soviet Union collapsed. The language non-proliferation treaties and nuclear deterrence kind of receded from the public square. Older generations were both more aware of this threat and more poisoned by Cold War ideology, committed to the arms race and to a McCarthyist view of the world. So that today, public polling reflects that the older you are, the more likely you are to take a hawkish view of this conflict and back the most escalatory measures. Given this landscape, the loss of the visceral sense of the threat, the hard-baked Cold War sentiment, we shouldn't be surprised, I guess, that calls are growing louder and louder to, quote, do more. This is something we've been tracking really closely here. The mania that's taken hold with shocking levels of anti-Russian bigotry and comprehensively large and rapid arms shipments and the most draconian sanctions on the planet and possibly in history. The emotional manipulation of human interest stories lacking any counterbalancing narrative of just how catastrophic a more direct intervention would ultimately be. Huge percentages of the public backing World War III inducing actions like a no-fly zone because of the media-driven frenzy. In a saga's covering today, the desire among some media figures to rehab Hitler, not kidding, in order to make Putin's attack on Ukraine worse than the Holocaust. Biden, thank God, seems to at least partially understand just how perilous the moment we're in, saying clearly we will not fight World War III in Ukraine. But that hasn't stopped him from taking actions against Russia, which were previously unthinkable and which have truly push pushed us to the brink of catastrophe, not to mention the foolish legal commitments we have made to militarily defend all 30 members of NATO should Russia move beyond Ukraine. We are now just starting to see Russia's response to our actions so far. So... In response to the hundreds of millions of dollars of U.S. and NATO arms which have flooded into Ukraine, Russia is now directly threatening the convoys carrying those arms. Their deputy foreign minister informed the Biden admin that those convoys are, quote, legitimate targets for attacks. Potential disaster was narrowly averted last week when Biden personally sank the deal to provide fighter jets to the Ukrainians, an insane move that Tony Blinken, Secretary of State, and other high-level officials reportedly were pushing for. 
Now, in response to our indiscriminate economic sanctions targeting everyone from oligarchs to babushkas, Russia has declared what should be obvious, that they consider our sanctions to be an overt act of war. At the same time, they're potentially scuttling one of the greatest accomplishments of non-proliferation, the re-entry into the Obama-era nuclear agreement with Iran. Russia is demanding sanctions relief as part of the new JCPOA, asking for a written commitment that their ability to, quote, have free, fully-fledged trade and economic and investment cooperation and military technical cooperation with Iran is guaranteed. The U.S. says this is a non-starter. In an ominous sign that we covered earlier, Iran's Revolutionary Guard took credit for a series of as many as 12 missiles, which were just fired from Iran towards a U.S. consulate in Iraq. So this is the landscape that we are all sleepwalking through, one littered with landmines and nuclear tripwires. Let me be absolutely clear. Putin's bluster may be exactly that. Lindsey Graham's claim that on nukes, Putin's all bark and no bite, it could be correct. But none of us should be willing to bear even the shred of a chance that Putin is crazy enough and nihilistic enough to actually do it. And none of us should delude ourselves about exactly what that means. Our bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki still stand as the only use of nuclear weapons in conflict. We murdered hundreds of thousands of Japanese civilians and the results were so devastating that they were hidden from the American public for decades. Extensive film footage that was recorded by the Japanese and by our own military of the immediate aftermath was classified. In fact, it's never been viewed by the public in its entirety. Newspaper articles about that devastation were completely quashed as an airtight lid was sealed over the atrocities which we had committed, substituted instead with the rather antiseptic image of the fearsome mushroom cloud. The former editor of Nuclear Times Magazine interviewed the man who oversaw the filming and the cover-up. He said, quote, I always had the sense that people in the Atomic Energy Commission were sorry we had dropped the bomb. The Air Force, it was also sorry. I was told by people in the Pentagon that they didn't want those film images out because they showed effects on man, woman, and child. They didn't want the general public to know what their weapons had done. At a time they were planning on more bomb tests, we didn't want the material out because we were sorry for our sins. I don't know about sorry for our sins, but it's clear such images could have led to a public uprising against our policy of nuclear arms race. And keep in mind, those bombs were nothing compared to the capabilities of today. Returning to our viral Twitter thread, Mark lays out what scientists say a nuclear war would look like today. So in a scenario where the U.S. and Russia deployed half of our nuclear arsenal, quote, about 770 million people would immediately die from the blast. Acute radiation sickness in just the first few days would take out many of those. But that's not even the worst impact. Soot from firestorms would circle the globe, destroying the ozone, mostly blocking out the sun and leading to mass crop failures and famine. Over five years, almost everyone in places like China, Russia, the UK, and the US will starve to death as food supplies rapidly disappear. Some small percentage of humans will continue the species in the now barren wasteland of planet Earth, but their daily, miserable, violent struggle for survival will hardly be a fate worth envying. Painting the picture of nuclear Armageddon, to be honest with you, it can make you sound like a crazy person, a hysterical loon who will in all likelihood, hopefully, be proven wrong as history marches on towards our more likely fate of decline brought on by the less instantaneous threat from the climate crisis. But as world historic idiots like Lindsey Graham casually dismiss this threat as fake, and the drumbeat to, quote, do more grows louder. We've got to face with clear eyes what that could actually mean. The chance might be small, it might be tiny, but the results are so devastating, they should thoroughly consume us all. If we are sleepwalking towards nuclear war, it is well past time we all sound the alarm to wake the hell up. And I think we have tried to carry this message a number of times. The chance might be small. You might be. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.